we're going to talk about the similarities and differences between primary and secondary groups. I'm Alex Lyon, and we will be working out of B.B. and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. So a primary group is a group whose main purpose is to give people a way to fulfill the need to associate with others. Primary groups, in other words, are about relationships. And the family group is the primary one. This is the fundamental or primary group that we are all born into. There's an expression that the family is the basic unit of society. Everybody is born into a family. Now, granted, this there are less than ideal circumstances, and and I understand that. But at its at its foundation, most people are born into some kind of family situation, and that is where, as a very young person, you are getting your needs met, your relationship needs met by the people in your family. So that's the number one primary group. And next, we have social groups. A social group would be not just a group of friends you walked from the class to the dining hall with. Uh, a social group is the enduring group of friends. So when I was in middle school and in high school, I had a group of four or five buddies that I hung up with, hung out with all the time. This was my primary social group. And we got to know each other. We got to know each other's families. We learned all about each other. And there was a stretch of years there where we were together all the time during school, after school, on the weekends. That was a primary group. It was a social group. Now let's turn to secondary groups. And there are many of these. Secondary groups are groups that exist to accomplish a task or achieve a goal. So my group of friends, we weren't trying to accomplish a task. We were just hanging out. We were there for the relationship. We weren't there for some job that we were trying to accomplish. But secondary groups do this. This could be a problem-solving group at work, a decision-making group at work. It could be a study group. Maybe you have experienced that. I know that I used to have a study group in college that I would join once in a while for a specific class. The task, we were there to get better at that course material so we could pass that upcoming test. That was our task. Therapy groups are another secondary group, a really important one for some people, and they're there to work on whatever issue they are trying to address. Could be a committee. On college campuses, there are a lot of committees. I'm on a bunch of committees myself currently, and you are working on some kind of task together. You're trying to accomplish something together that maybe an individual is not capable of doing on their own. And then, of course, focus groups. Focus groups are a little different than the others, but sometimes, let's say, a company is trying to launch a new product. They might bring a focus group of potential customers together to get their impression, get their feedback, collect that data. And in fact, in in university studies all the time, there are people doing focus groups to collect research and data to see what they can learn about different topics by asking people in these focus groups. So those are some examples of primary groups and secondary groups. Now, of course, what they have in common is that they are groups and they overlap. And on the surface, they look very similar. And you are probably involved in more than one of these. So question of the day, what primary groups can you identify in your life? And what secondary groups are you currently involved in now or maybe in the past? I would love to hear your comments in that section below the video. So I will see you next time. Take care.